asking when I first started, um, and by the way, everybody, I'm going to try to provide at least a couple of tips that be doable and actionable as a result of this. So um, that's my goal here, in addition to just kind of giving you a sense about what these, these courses are about. So I started coaching uh, literally 25 years ago, and it was back in the day when nobody really knew what coaching was. It was still associated with, you know, uh, football and basketball and so forth. And I remember I went to a radio um, show and I was asked to be a guest. And this is up in Tacoma, Washington. We started our business up in Seattle. And the gal said to me before we went into the booth, she says, well, you know, Dean, I'm really excited about this, but I really don't know, want to know anything about your company. I just want to be very extemporaneous and, cre and creative and off the cuff. I said, okay, fine. So we go into the booth and uh, they close the door and we get the mics all set up and they've got this red light that eventually says on air. So we know that everything is live. And she turns to me and she says, hi, we've got Dean Newland here with Mission Facilitators International. So Dean, tell me what professional sports team do you coach? And at that point, I had to sort of delicately uh, redirect her to something that was not about sports, but was about business. And I think that coaching right now is ubiquitous. After 25 years, it has become such a common practice in business that it is being used uh, so much and so often, which is wonderful. It is not a trend. It is not a fad. Yeah, I think it's here to stay. And I think the reason why it is, is because continuous check-in with your coach that allows for you to be able to master something and that kind of neutral support, which I'll talk about here in a minute. One of the things, however, is that everybody pretty much, because it's not a regulated industry, can call themselves a coach. I just was talking to somebody yesterday, doing some work with the Mayo Clinic, and somebody was saying, yeah, there's my friend wants to become a coach, and I was uh, asking them questions about the process they go through, and they really didn't have much of a background. They just thought they were a pretty good listener. Um, Right now, the industry does not provide, you know, that kind of requirement that you have to be licensed by the state. Anybody can call themselves a coach. So it's wonderful that we've got that kind of understanding of the benefits in many ways of coaching. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of misunderstanding about what coaching is and what it's not. And this course is actually developed really after 25 years in my life. Plus, I partnered with somebody who has about 30 years work in terms of coaching and providing coaching training and was actually on the board of directors for the International Coach Federation, which is really now the gold standard for our industry. And this program is really set up with those ethics and those standards and those processes in mind so that we are aligned with the best of the best when it comes to standards. And so that's what this program is really um, found. The foundation is really based on those, those standards so that when we get into a program, you know you're getting uh, some really good content. Um, if you want to move to the next slide here, that'd be fine here, Melanie, but I wanted to also say when it comes to coaching is that we really believe in everything that we do that you can't necessarily just read a book. We believe that you need to be able to have a visceral experience about it. So when you go through this coaching program with us, you're going to be coaching people by the end of the day. You're not going to just be reading a book and sitting in the back of the room, you know, wondering what your Facebook page has just said you're actually going to get up and actually have a visceral experience around coaching. It's like we're going to get you in the water. You're going to start swimming before the end of the day. And that's the only way we think that you can really master anything is by that experience. And that's true whether it's this class or the other two classes is that it's very experiential. It's taking cutting edge uh, techniques and tools, combining that with something that you can actually practice it that day versus hope that someday you can actually apply that tip. So the coaching process that we have um, developed and that we are aligning with the ICF is really, again, using some of these new cutting edge understandings around how the brain works and how can we create trusting relationships and how we can create that foundation. And that's really what we think is going to be part of what sets this apart. If you would move to the next slide, uh, Melanie, as well, I can also t share with you that we have this um, five-step process that we walked our coaches through in terms of them being able to become better at. These are not new concepts, but these are things that the distinctions and the understanding and the awareness to be able to raise up your ability to have those kind of conversations is really what the coach into a great coach. So we really start with this, you know, the age old um, idea about listening. And we would really do a lot of work on this, but listening is the foundation. This is where we create the trust. And so as a tip for those of you who are listening in, you know, next time that you're in a conversation with somebody where you really want to develop a better connection, listen without judgment versus listen for 
when they're going to finally stop and you can say what you want to say. Listen as an exercise to being present. Listen to be able to understand that person's point of view, whether or not you agree with it. And if you can start to change the dance by how we communicate with that person or how you communicate with that person, I think you'll start to see a different kind of relationship come about. Everybody has to feel understood in order for that relationship to take them to the next step. We also go into another skill around asking, don't telling, which is really another way of saying in, in a brief way, um, ask without judgment. So that if you can ask questions without, excuse me, ask without answer, excuse me. So asking questions without any answer in your mind. That's the, the purest kind of discovery. So that in coaching, we really want to be able to help the individual understand how they can discover their own answer. You and me and most people, as far as I know, are much more apt to learn something if we discover it than if we force feed them. And that, in a nutshell, is what coaching is really all about versus management, which is a different skill and very, very much needed. And we need managers in, work, in organizations. But management is usually about coordinating and telling people what to do. Coaching is really a process by which we help them uncover their own answers. The other skills, reframing is a way in which we help people see things from a different perspective. I don't think that people change a behavior until they change their, their uh, perceptions. The notion is that behavior follows perception. If that were not the case, then just go read a book and figure out how to become a multimillionaire tomorrow because that's what the book told you to do. We don't make those results happen in our lives because we haven't changed our core beliefs, our core, our core perceptions, even though our mind might know differently. So coaching is a way to help unlock that and finding out the unsaid, the unspoken, and the unknown. And when that coach can help that individual get to that kind of clarity, then actions can really start to take forth. Truthful feedback, briefly, is just a way of providing that person the kind of honest feedback in a safe environment so that person can see that which they cannot necessarily see themselves. And then lastly is all around requesting, people getting into action. I truly believe that coaching, when it really works, is about discovery, about self-awareness, and about getting people into action on those new awarenesses. And it's a very trusted relationship. And as a result of this particular class, you will have an actual experience around coaching. You'll have me helping you be the coach. You'll have the tools in which to do this in a format. And um, you can actually start some coaching sessions yourself, and we'll talk about how to do that. The next slide here is part of that process. I mean, where we guide people through um, those ways in which we want to organize these, these coaching sessions. We want to talk about what the outcome is that the particular coaching client is. We want to talk about um, what sort of information do we need to gather in order to help that particular person. We want to develop a strategy around helping them moving forward. And we also want to know what, what good looks like, what success looks like, what does results look like. I do want you to know that you do not necessarily have to be a coach in a company. You can be a coach for a friend. There's different kind of coaches. There's life coaches, the productivity coaches, there's leadership coaches. Um, it doesn't really necessarily matter, but I want to make sure that everybody has a sense of that coaching is something that you can learn, you can pick up. And this, this particular program is really about 50 years in the making, and it continues to evolve, but it's, it's very interactive and very exciting. And again, I would just say, uh, before we move on to the next class, is just think about the next time you're listening to somebody, try and listen without judgment, ask questions without answers. <laughs>